just bringing it back to, to, to our industry, uh, if you look at a lot of the reasons why people fail to stick with the program, right? You have a lot of, 18% you know, of new members that gyms sign in, in the New Year, New You campaigns. Um, most of those new members, the majority of them fall off the program in mid-February after six weeks. Mm. The majority of them fall off a program. And so the people that are consistent are roughly the 20 to 25% that make health and fitness a part of their lifestyle. Because for whatever reason, we've programmed ourselves, we've trained ourselves through repetitive patterns mm -hmm. to follow something, right? You have to do something roughly 300 times before it becomes a habit. But with AI, we could now say, let's give this new person who's coming into this for the first time something that re relates to them. Let's help them crawl, walk, and then run. Let's not just have them run from day one. And imagine you have a new member coming into your gym. You know nothing about them. So you might pair them up with a trainer. You might ask them a couple of questions for onboarding. But imagine with AI, by, by having a few data points, so you know their background, maybe what neighborhood they live in, maybe you know their age, right, their fitness level, you could now predictively say, these are the steps you have to take. Mm -hmm. right? and, and, and we know friends like, like, like Ian with Keep Me, that's exactly what they're doing, right? Yeah. They're using... Predictive retention and, to yeah. improve retention. And, and there are real world applications to, to help democratize fitness using AI. So I think the more immediate application of narrow AI, which is the most basic form of AI, um, could be transformational to the industry. Mm. Yeah, I suppose it's, it, that, that's, that, those are the questions that um, I kind of get. It's, it's almost like, how do, you, how do you get that delicate balance? And I'm sure as a society, we're going to, totally go in the wrong direction for a while until it pulls yes. back you know you look at what's happened with social media great idea before we knew it it got a hold of us and now everybody's obsessed you know you god knows what will happen to our children because it's just <laughs> taken control of yep. their lives um and, and and i suppose with ai that's likely to happen i guess being in a an industry a people industry um where well <laughs> previously people industry mm -hmm. um where it's, it's about you being healthy body and mind, it, almost like how you can use some of this technology to do the stuff that maybe is important but not essential, but without necessarily doing away with the bits that you want to be able to focus more on. You know, I, I, I suppose I see it in an opportunity to kind of have more of that good quality interaction, yes. take, take away some of the unnecessary stuff that you don't really, you know, doesn't make sense for people to do but but then doubling down on on some of the bits that that do um that are important because i think it's it, it's quite easy even within our business i'm starting to see it, it's quite easy to sort of say okay look we'll move all of that over to a machine and then you end up with this kind of like canned it's stuff it's cold that yeah it's cold it's yeah. it's emotionless um and, and, and if, if nothing else it's like okay well this is this isn't you know, you're not put necessarily put the time into doing this. That's and right. I suppose when you do put the time into it, okay, it's a little bit sort of kind of, it's it's not perfect and it's a little bit broken. Um, but the the AI thing that I did, it's almost like maybe I've, I've missed going through this process myself. It's definitely helped me and maybe it's shortcut and I did the whole thing in an afternoon instead of a few weeks. But then am I missing out on that sort of forced learning process that you have to go to, to think through ideas and, 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 and evolve yourself to another level or have I just sort of skipped a level and, and I'm not really, you know, I'm in a false place. It's like fast food. It, yeah, yeah. So I think there's a counter argument to that as well, which is that, yes, it is going to help you accomplish a task soon. So you did something in four hours that might have taken you a week to do and you're skipping some steps but you're using a tool. I think what you have to look at is what does that afford you on the other side? What are the other experiences that you're going yeah. to gain? And it's like any other tool that we implement, right? If you think about even <laughs> mobile phones, mobile internet, what computers have done, what applications have done, what apps have done for us over the last several decades, they've given us time back for a particular task, mm -hmm. but then opened us up towards new skills. And, and I'm looking at AI in that same way. So even if you think about your fitness goals or your wellness goals, I think it will help you achieve a better quality of life, but supplemented with a real person. So if you think about personal trainers, I don't think personal trainers or these coaches um, are obsolete. I don't think they're going to go away. I think, in fact, they're more valuable than ever. 
but now they're going to have more tools at their disposal. So instead of mm -hmm. working out with you for three months to really understand you know, where your strengths and weaknesses are, well, AI could help inform that a lot better, which is gonna help you reach your goals sooner, which should help you stick with your program mm. longer. Yeah, I suppose, I suppose your evaluation stage, you know, sometimes it can take there's, you know, so many bits of information you need to learn from someone to help them. I suppose having a, a, a sort of 60 second evaluation where you've got everything and it's figured it out and it, and it creates a dashboard of key things to, to, to look at in order of priority, yeah. I suppose that, that could be really beneficial. Um, yeah, it's, 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 how, how do you, how do you then get your head around this? Because from a business perspective, and I've, I've got, a, I've got a few different examples, which we, which we've touched on, but when, when, when looking at this, how should, how, how do you look at it and how do you advise people to sort of look at this and say, all right, look, we've got this super powerful technology. It can do so many things in so many different areas. Some of them could be great. Some of them are not good, great. Some of them are relevant now. Some of them are relevant in two or three years time. How do you kind of pull all that together, the different concepts and the different branches and the different stage of adoption and start to put it into some form of hierarchy where you can say, all right, well, look, I'm going to, I'm going to, start looking, thinking, studying about this one and, you know, the next step would be this one and this one. How do you put all that together and, um, and, and think about it in a logical way? Well, one of the first things to understand, and we talked about this over the um, meal last night, consumers are evolving. Consumers are changing for all the things that we've been talking about today. Computers, mobile phones, social media, like our children, have a much different perspective and access to information than we've had um, generating content. So like the, the type of consumer that you have today is very different than what a lot of brands, unfortunately, were initially built to serve. And AI is going to be a key tool in doing that, and here's why. If you think about a consumer today, um, they are less connected to a brand and more connected to personalities or people that they can relate to. And because of AI, because of social media, um, you don't just have you know, 50 key celebrities, but you might have thousands of influencers and people that someone's gonna to gravitate towards because it's, they find them more interesting, they're more attracted to them, it, they could resonate or relate to them much better. So if you are a brand, if you are a business um, that typically serves you know, a product, like if it's a gym or studio, that is your offering, how do you personalize that? And how do you attract and retain that customer in the past? broad-based marketing would work. You could just send out an email and say, I have, a, I have a discount and have a special, go do that. We then got smarter with marketing, right? We, had, we now had something called segmentation, where we would now segment what we would send to you. So we'd know that, okay, well, if you dropped out of the checkout funnel here, then we're gonna send you this disc and we're gonna try to bring you, we're gonna try to win you back. We have these win-back strategies. That's been around for the last 10, 15 years. Well. That's not gonna work anymore with the new generation. You need to personalize it even further. You have to get into what is meaningful to them uh, in order to attract, retain, and keep people engaged. So in business, in the real sense, if you want to win and keep your customer, which is getting increasingly harder to do, AI is gonna be a key part of that. Here's the other thing. If you think about what we call your CAC, right, the cost of acquisition of, of a customer is constantly increasing over time. When you and I were kids, you know, we used to watch Saturday morning cartoons and see our ads for um, Frosted Pebbles or like Cocoa Pebbles, Frosted Flakes, all that, right? We had, we had cartoons and characters that we, we related to. We were attracted to toys that might have been in our cereal boxes and that said, hey, mom, dad, go, go buy us this. I mean, kids have progressed a lot more from that today. So you had TV ads. Then you, when you grew up, you had ads in magazines, and that's how we consume content, was through magazine ads, that then went online, and then you would see ads online, which then went to social media, and then you had paid ads come to social media. Well, now, because you have so many data points, that's being pulled back because they can collect less on you. So as a business, you need to get closer to your customer. How do you do that? You do that by engaging more with them, learning more about them, collecting data from them for you, and then using AI to keep them. Right, so this whole idea of the consumer life cycle, the whole idea of, of acquisition, of how you acquire a customer, how you engage a customer, how you retain that customer over time, has evolved faster than any other period in commerce. 
Um, I would argue in, in faster than any, any other period in, in the thousands of years in, in what we've had commerce. So if a business doesn't understand or embrace AI, using it as a tool as, as you've been doing, I think they won't be relevant anymore because mm -hmm. the younger generation, Generation Z and the ones that are behind it, uh, have less affinity to these strong name brands and more affinity to people and personalization. So you, you need to get there quickly. If not, you'll be obsolete.